Hello everybody, good morning from Adelaide. So good to see you. As you jump on, please say hi. Um, as always, I'm just gonna check my settings here on this video just to make sure that it's set to public. But as you jump on, please say hello so we can see you guys. There won't be a second public, there we go. Oh, so mine says, can you guys let me know that you can see me and hear me okay? Because my Facebook, right now is telling me this video is not available. So yay, people can hear me and say, good, okay. That's great, good morning, good morning everybody. Hello, hi everyone, yay, it's working. Hello, hello. Yeah, my phone is flashing at me with a notification saying this video is not available due to a technical error that we are working on to fix. <laughs> but you can all hear and see it's okay. So that's okay. That's good. Good morning. Oh, so good to see everybody. Hello, hello. Oh, I see a lot of familiar people on here. Lots of friends. Hello, guys. Oh, so great to see everybody. Well, as always, I know um, that these times uh, with Matt are always powerful, but I know this morning's gonna be even more powerful. <laughs> you know, when you uh, you have to push through a few things <laughs> to get here, you know that somebody's not happy. So it's gonna be a great morning. We made it and we're here, hallelujah. So um, I'm really looking forward to this. So Matt, thanks again for jumping on. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> My pleasure, we've had a major power outage in Haberfield this morning. So <laughs> we're doing everything by 4G, so let's... <laughs> Uh, yeah. believing that Jesus is going to make this thing work well. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Yes. Yeah. So, guys, please be praying over this internet connection. Um, yeah, Matt messaged me this morning and said, wow, I have no power here in Haberfield. <laughs> so uh, praise God for iPads. Hallelujah. So, yes, it's, it's going to be good. Um, well, guys, we are doing this um, this morning because Matt and I have just been having quite a number of conversations lately um, just around what God is doing right now. And uh, when Matt was talking to me um, about what the Lord has put on his heart, which we're going to talk about this morning, I just I had such an incredible stirring in my spirit that this is such an important conversation um, right now. And I know many of you have watched and contacted us about uh, the table of hope that we did last week with Nat Fuller as well and how encouraged you guys were and how the Holy Spirit ministered to you. Um, and so I think that this is like just another one of those conversations that I believe is just really going to um, minister to you and uh, and just really encourage you for the hour. And I, I just have to say, Matt, that the, the title, The Beauty of the Bride, you're speaking my language. <laughs> When you when you suggested that, I was like, "Wow, that's just amazing!" So, I'm really looking forward to this. <laughs> it's going to be oh, good. I know you will, Lana. You, yeah, <laughs> you do. <laughs> you do. All right. Well, um, how about look? I think most people on here um, that I've, I'm seeing the comments are saying, "Love you." The chat that you guys do, love you both. But if there's anybody that's jumped on. Um, that's new to um, seeing you and I ministering together. And they're like, who's Matt Beckenham? Can you give us like 50 seconds? Who's Matt? <laughs> 50 seconds is easy. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm Matt. I'm, a, I'm married to Trish um, and uh, we have three adult kids. We live in Sydney, Australia, and mm -hmm. I do run a Baptist church here in, called Haberfield Baptist Church. Um, the heart of what we do, though, is about empowering people to hear the voice of God. And so it's very much in the apostolic and prophetic. Uh, I train people uh, in what I call prophetic mentoring. Uh, and it's just that ability to, to know that the Father's speaking all the time. And just so often we just miss those moments and just allowing mm -hmm. uh, just that place of relationship to bloom and blossom. Uh, yeah, so that's what I do. Uh, that's kind of who I am. I love doing these kinds of things where we're helping people discover the power of the bride. Yeah. Uh, and there's been so many conversations surrounding this one uh, conversation that I think mm -hmm. that the bride of Christ is something that the father is bringing back to yeah. the place uh, where so many are now tasting and seeing just how good he is. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. kind of me. 
that was 50 seconds. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was good. Um, and guys, like one thing I will say about Matt is, you know, not only is Matt and Trish like very, very dear friends of ours, but this man that you're looking at right here is is truly a friend of God. And the way that he carries the heart of God um, and the love of God and the presence of God is just stunning to me. And I, I say this a lot and I don't say it as a throwaway comment. Oh, that's just something nice to say. Um, I actually mean it when I say that um, every time I have a conversation with Matt, I, I just, I walk away just marked by the presence of God and the love of God that flows through him. So I know that um, you guys are going to be so blessed by what um, the Lord has been putting on his heart. So Matt, let's dive in. What, um, let, let's have a conversation. What's the Holy Spirit been speaking to you about? That's the biggest conversation in the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so specifically, <laughs> part of, all right, around this. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I love that we can laugh, Lana, and I think that's part of mm. the joy that we have discovered in the bride of Christ. The mm. joy of the Lord is something that the Father is. Um, the word I just on tip of my tongue is unleash and. So that um, believing and knowing um, that even during the time where the world is in so much uh, strife, the Father is doing infinitely more with his joy than we can possibly imagine. And so the fact that we can share that sort of moment, that's, that's beautiful for me. But the concept of the bride is such a strong conversation. One, as a pastor of a church, uh, mm. COVID-19 has represented million things and a number of them are, for me have been based around how we do church and uh, being in a Baptist tradition uh, we've done church the same way generationally for the longest time and COVID-19 and this season of lockdown and I do want to connect the the CLR moment the divine reboot Lana that, again, that you're so um, so powerful and speaking out um, I just think that this season for us, and I know here in Haberfield, has been so definitive in changing the concepts of seeing what the church can actually look like. And so part of the conversation that I've invested in with our own people is that we're not going back um, per se, but we're leaning in. And so what does that mean? Uh, well, John 5, it says that we only do what we see father doing that's jesus himself saying that and john 6 we only say what we believe the father is saying and so for me it's this conversation around both the father being seen and the father being heard um, and it's not negating all the years of doing um some strange uh, some uh, not strange some just some traditions that have been built in some pretty strange areas and sometimes traditions that have been built in some very beautiful areas uh, so i'm not dissing all of that but I am engaging with a new conversation, with the new wine, the new CLR moment, that divine reboot, where we can actually uh, be creating a new conversation around what the bride of Christ is. Just got a message from Lana that her computer died. So hopefully this will go live and hopefully Lana will jump back in in just a second and she can join in with the conversation. Um, so let me just keep pushing into this one conversation. One thing that I see uh, here so often is what voices are we listening to in church? And like, as I've been sitting there, so I feel like the father's been sharing a number of things because often the church listens to the voice that is found in the world. And the voice of the world will tell the church what it should be and what it can be. The voice of the world will have a mold that it's, church is supposed to fit into and so you'll hear phrases like christians should be doing this or christians shouldn't be doing that and that's the world telling us how the bride of christ is supposed supposed to be um, what's interesting as a minister is that often when you do weddings how often is it the conversation of the family of what the marriage should be rather than the conversation of the couple and that's kind of my metaphor for helping you understand concept the world has a voice that tells the church what it should be doing and many things that the church listens to with the world um, well they can be uh, they can be helpful things 
There's, there's things that, 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 that the world wants from the church, which can be helpful things, but, and I'm not saying they're not, but what I am uh, in conversation over is what does the Father say? Hello. I am back. I apologize for that, Matt. (laughs) All of a sudden you were talking and my computer literally shut down. (laughs) Well, we call that a divine interruption, don't we? Yeah, we do. And a divine interruption (laughs) with all the power problems that we're having in Haberfield and Adelaide and computers. Maybe all of us that are listening to this can strap in tight because there is about to be a power released through the kingdom of God that's going to flood back into the bride of Christ. And Lana is just frozen again. Okay, let's keep going. So the voice of the church, the voice of the bride, we got the voice of the world. And, and again, like I was saying, we're speaking about the voice of the Father speaking over it. But there is another voice that often we listen to, and that is the voice of religion. And often in churches, we call that the spirit of religion. And the spirit of the re- of religion will try and always walk right down the middle line of both of those conversations. It'll pull us away from the Father's voice and the fa- and seeing what the Father is doing. It will try and show us how much more the world we actually are. And it puts us in the middle of all this where we go, Father, what are, what are you doing? And so often with the spirit of religion, you'll hear phrases in your own spirit that, um, that you're not good enough, you're not doing enough, you're not present enough, you're not giving enough. You hear all of that from the spirit of religion. But the spirit of the Lord does something a whole lot different. 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And in that place of freedom, there is a voice that the Father has always had there. But so often we've missed it and we've gone missing in action about it. So often we've given away our voice to someone who leads the church. And someone who leads the church, uh, again, there's nothing wrong with that conversation other than the fact that if the people in the church have 